Welcome back. This is going to be my daily forecast for the commodities market and the precious metals market for Tuesday, December 17, 2020. So we'll start by looking at the US dollar index. And as you can see, we have fallen even further today. We went all the way down to 90.03. So there was a lot of economic news today and uh, most of it is going to be really bad for the US dollar long term. So the Fed decided that the interest rates are going to stay at these historic lows for the foreseeable future all the way to 2023. So you can look at it two ways. First of all, they didn't have a choice. They have to keep the rates low at this point. They are you're going to see uh, massive amounts of government spending and Fed is going to do everything that it basically has to do in order to basically um, keep the market afloat. So if they were to pronounce at this point that in a few months they were going to uh, increase interest rate, then you would see the market absolutely crash and you would have a really bad time um, trying to get the economy going again in the United States. So interest rates are going to stay low in the United States, also in Europe and mostly everywhere else. So what that means for the US dollar is that usually interest rate fall, uh, the, the value of a currency falls interest rates. So if interest rates are very low or they decrease, then the, currency, the value of the currency uh, also goes the same way. So long term perspective, we are just going to see more of this. It is highly unlikely that we're going to see the US dollar appreciate if interest rates keep being this low. So if you look at the weekly chart, we can see where we may head. So back in 2014, we were down at 80. And the thing is, we're going to test this area in the coming weeks. This is from 90 to and roughly 87.84. If this breaks this area here, then we are just going to see a basically a drop towards 80. And this will have a major implications for commodities. They are going to be really cheap. There's going to be a massive amount of uh, of uh, of demand for these commodities because of the of because they're going to be much cheaper because of the low value of the dollar. So Oil will rally, gold will rally, we'll see indices just absolutely go bananas. Yeah, probably the reason why we also saw Bitcoin rally this significant today is because of the depreciation of the US dollar and the future forecast for the US dollar is also really bleak. So it's going to be very, very cheap and it will also have major implication for Great British Pound, US dollar, Euro, Euro dollar and so on. So... One thing that can help is that um, the other, for example, the um, European Central Bank will most likely do the same thing, keep interest rate very low. So there'll be a mishmash there. But long term perspective for US dollar, uh, if you listen to the Fed, is that it's going to go much lower. But at this point, we are at 33. So it doesn't mean that we won't rally up towards the 20 exponential or probably the 50 at some point those rallies are going to occur. But long-term perspective for the US dollar is that it's going to depreciate significantly further. We're talking about the next two years, 2023. So at this point, we are almost oversold. These technical indicators, some of them are showing signs of life. So we may have a small rally towards the 20 exponential. If you look at the the daily chart, we may have a move similar to this towards the 20 exponential um, because we are overstretched at this point. If that happens tomorrow or a when, uh, Friday, that's fairly unlikely. Probably next week, we're going to see a little bit of rally towards the 20 exponential. So let's look at oil. So we have yet again gone higher in oil. We are trading at this point at 47.93. We are heading towards the uh, 48 and uh, we're only $2 away from 50. So at this point, any basically uh, 
pullback towards the 20 exponential is, is basically a buying opportunity. We are getting very, very overstretched at this point. If you just look at the RSI, we're at this uh, 71. And if you have a commodity that is not in a high demand and it's basically overbought, that is not a very good cocktail. If you just have a little bit of appreciation of the US dollar, we'll see this fall really uh, drastically towards the 20 exponential, which is at 45.33 at this point. So just keep that in mind. At this point, I'm just leaving this market. I want to see how far it goes. Um, I'm guessing that 50 is going to be the very top of this market for a very long time. When we get there, we're going to see enormous amount of selling, probably all the way down to 45 or towards the 50 moving average, which is at 32 or 43, it will be that point. So at this point, I'm just staying away from this, just see where we technically are going. But technical indicators are still bullish, but we are overstretched, very overstretched. So we could have a pullback at any point. So let's look at natural gas. As you can see, we are just seeing more of the same. And I think I said when we were over here only two days ago, that if we get stuck here and see two, three, four, probably five trading days, similar, similar to that, we're just hanging around at the 20 exponential, not doing anything. We're going to manage to break through this. We're going to see this market just tumble to the downside. So we have been falling, rallying towards the 20, rallying again against the 20, and then yet again, three times. And every single time we have been rejected. And it looks like we are also going to be rejected here. So there are news of a massive snowstorm hitting the uh, the northeast, uh, northeastern part of the United States. A lot, a uh, big portion of the population of the United States lives in this area. So that is going to drive up demand. So we could see a very sudden spike all of the sudden when temperature starts to, to decrease significantly because demand for uh, natural gas increases uh, significantly when basically demand, when, when temperatures um, change drastically at this point it's looked like we are going to go higher these second indicators are showing more signs of bullishness than bearishness and we are fight low on the rsi so there's a lot of room to the upside so keep track of the news but if we get stuck here it may mean that we'll tumble all the way down to the 20 200 moving average and that is an absolute buying opportunity otherwise if you break the 50 and we got a lot of bad news where weather conditions are getting worse, then expect this to basically explode to the upside. We can just see what happened only a few years ago when cold weather conditions were in the United States. This is back in 2018, and this was back in 2014. So every single winter you have these spikes here. You just see this uh, usually is around uh, December, January, February, you have these massive spikes. So, so it's a seasonality thing, uh, especially in, in natural gas. So let's look at copper. We can see that we have yet again rallied. So of course, as long as that US dollar is depreciating and that there is a fair amount of demand in the in Asian markets, especially for copper, then this market is going to go higher. At this point, we are overstretched, we are overbought, we're at 72 in the, in the RSI. We have been expecting a pullback towards the 20 or even the 50 for a really long time, but we haven't seen that. So at this point, pullbacks towards the 20 exponential are definitely buying opportunities. If this breaks, then we're heading all the way down to the 50 moving average. Uh, but at this point, it is not a market I'm interested in basically entering whatsoever. So let's look at gold. So gold broke down all the way to the 20 exponential and moving average today. And now we are rallying yet again. And mainly due to the fact that we have uh, the decision of the Fed and that they're going to keep the interest rates very long for a very long time. That means that the US dollar is going to depreciate 
and that of course is also very bullish for gold. We have this uh, triangle here which we need to break and my bet and always has been is that we are going to break to the upside. Silver has already broken the upper uh, trend line and that is fairly unusual. Usually it's gold that rallies uh, before silver but silver is even more bullish than gold is at this point. So if we manage to take out the 50 moving average we're heading towards this trend line here and if that breaks then that is basically a sign that we are ready to uh, change this direction to uh, the uh, to a bullish market. So we could we are probably seeing signs of that already. So this is a low, this is a low. If you're making higher lows at this stage, it means that we're probably going to continue in this direction. That means that this line here is where we are heading towards. So rally here, lows, and just go higher and higher from here. That is also a possibility for this market. If uh, silver rallies this much, then gold is going to also rally significantly. But there are hurdles in the way, the 50 and the major resistance line here that we have to get through. Otherwise, if we are rejected here, we're heading back towards the uh, support line and then we'll just go back and forwards until we break out in the, in, eventually. So let's look at silver. So silver has absolutely smashed to the upside. We're roughly up at 3-4% at this point. We had this major resistance line here, which we tried to take out yesterday. We did not manage to do that, but today we are trading well above that trend line. So at this point, we are most likely going to see something similar to this. So every single time we get close to this line, we are going to see this market rally. So this is a sign that we are going to go higher from here. So uh, yes, next target are these previous highs here, $25.90, uh, uh, yeah, $25.96. Then we're going to test this area. And this is going to be in the major test uh, for silver. We stayed in this area for a very long time and it's going to be massive, um, massive resistant this area here so when we get there if we manage to bring, take out this top we'll head into this area and if we manage to break that then we're going to these all-time highs here at 40 uh, 40 dollars so at this point a little bit of pullback is a buying opportunity at this stage uh, we have broken this major resistance line and that means we're most likely going to go significantly higher in silver so let's look at platinum. So we have rallied today. We gave most of those gains back. Uh, we broke down was basically significant in the beginning and then rallied. And so we have been back and forward uh, uh, quite a lot. But it's the same thing here. Pullbacks towards the 20 exponential. I think the bottom of this market is basically uh, 1000. We are not going lower than that. So pullbacks towards the 1000, there's also the 20 exponential moving average here. That is basically a buying opportunity. We are, we are not or bought at this point. Uh, technical indicators are very flat. So it may well be that we'll just buy time going sideways. But best would be if we went all the way down to about 20 and then we could start buying here with a stop loss right underneath. So no interest basically shorting this. Every pullback at this point is a buying opportunity. So let's look at Pallium. We can see that we have yet again tried to rally and go. This is a really boring commodity to trade. There is nothing happening here whatsoever. So we have the bottom, the top here at 2.446 and the bottom of 2.186. We are right in the middle. There's no reason to basically enter this market. You could make the case that we are creating a triangle here and that we may see some action tomorrow. So, for example, there. So, we have been trading 
with this massive uh, back and forward here two weeks ago and we are trading into this corner here and we are most likely going to break to the upside or break to the downside from here and that is going to be a fairly significant move if you look at the technical indicators they are favoring the upside at this point so it may well be that we break above here head towards these previous highs and if we manage to take out these previous highs then or this resistance level as you say we're heading towards these previous highs um, otherwise i would not consider basically trading this um, I'm interested in buying here all the way down at where a significant support or selling it here at if we get rejected at, at this resistant line. So, so let's look at aluminium. So as you can see, we have pulled back quite significantly as was expected uh, yesterday. It is quite difficult still to say where we are going. Um, I have a feeling that we are going to drop significantly towards the 50 moving average. We have just tried to rally and it has failed every single time. And usually when that is the case, you have a major pullback. If you look at technical indicators, they are also looking very bearish at this point. So I would hesitate basically buying this. I would wait to see whether or not the 20 exponential is as uh, supportive as it was back here if that is the case then it's possible to buy it otherwise i think we will break towards the 50 like we did here and then we'll rally again so let's look at nickel we can see that we have started our descent and this is really interesting if you look at technical indicators, they are basically screaming that we are going significantly lower. We got very overstretched. At this point, we are most likely going back towards the 20 exponential. We'll find uh, quite a lot of resistance here at the 17. Um, and that's probably as far as we will go. It'll probably run into major support here. But if we can get down towards the 20 exponential and find resistance there, the support there, then uh, that is the basically the entry point that for this market. I have no interest in basically buying this at the point or, or selling it. I need to see this market go lower in order to enter this market. So let's look at sugar. So we have rallied yesterday, rallied yet again, but we're showing signs of weakness. And this is basically what I was afraid of. It is very likely at this point that we will only rally up towards the 20 exponential moving average or the 50, which will be resistant at this point, and then we'll break down again. It looks like we're making lower lows, not significant lower lows, but that is basically what it looks like at this point. And because we got rejected, even didn't even get close to the 20 exponential and got rejected and broke down here, that is not a very good sign. Technical indicators, though, are looking very bullish. So we may see this market go and test the 50 tomorrow. But if we stick around here for, uh, for two, four days, then that is a sign that we will break even down even further. We have to take out these lows before we go significantly lower from here. So let's look at cotton. So we have rallied all the way up towards 7, 0 0.7, 75, 77. And then we have created this very ugly looking hammer here. So inverted hammer. And this is usually a very, very shine. Um, I would not be surprised if we get a candle, a red candle similar to this one, all the way down to 0 0.7437 tomorrow. So we were overbought. We are not over what now, we're at 69, but still on the edge. Technical indicators are turning around, and last time we turned around in the CCI, we saw this happen. We went significantly down towards the 20 exponential, and that is what I'm hoping for now. Fall towards the 20, buy in, and then go higher. So let's look at Cocoa.
So it has done what I expected and um, I'm still hesitating because uh, these segment indicators are looking dreadful. They are very bearish, all of them. There's a lot of room to the downside. So we may see this fall even further. If you look at uh, the one hour chart, we can see that it looks like we hit a bottom here and that we are going to head upwards. It also looks on the, uh, the technical indicators that we are to go, go higher in the daily chart. And that is a positive sign. Whether or not we manage to break the 20 or the 50 and so on, that's a different thing. But technical indicators, at least on the day on the one hour chart, are showing signs of bullishness. So in the four hour chart, it's not the same. So the reason why we found support here is because we ran into the 200 moving average in the four hour chart. So if this breaks, then we're going significantly low. We're talking about down towards uh, 2.4 and uh, even lower than that to 2.334. But at this point, the 200 moving average is holding. We have tested it several to five times already and it's still holding. If we manage to get the stochastic to turn around here and the MACD, then there's a very good chance that we may go and turn around in Kakoa, which fell based apart yesterday. So go back to the daily chart. This would mean that we have hit the bottom, which were the previous highs over here. And this is also in coordination with the Fibonacci retracements, which is roughly around here. It's basically the 50 Fibonacci is around this area here. We have broken it. We're trading a little bit down below it, but it's the 50 moving average that is really keeping this up in the daily chart. So we'll see what happens tomorrow. If we get a green candlestick here, if the four in the four hour chart, the technical indicators are turning around, then I'll probably enter a buy in again with a stop loss underneath the 50 and a target of the very highest here. So let's look at uh, wheat. We can see that we have been all over the place. Um, I was afraid that this was going to happen. It did happen. We fell all the way down to uh, 589. Technical indicators are turning around here. So it is fairly likely that we are going to roll over and head significantly lower towards the 200 moving average. So we have basically been creating lower lows. So this is just a fakely, a fakely a fake rally, and we're just going to drift significantly lower towards these levels. So at this point, I'm just going to stay away from this. If we manage to rally above the um, 50 moving average, then I'll probably... Um, uh, look at it again in order whether or not to buy or not. So hope you find this helpful. If you have any questions, you're welcome to write me on Patreon. And uh, otherwise, good luck and thank you very much.